Joining us from the Australian capital, Canberra, this morning, we have the Climate Change Minister of Australia, Greg Kumbe, joins us on the program. Minister, thank you so much for your time on uh, such a busy day for you. I guess, first off, uh, my question has to be about why the Australian government wants to go ahead with this plan when it's so unpopular with the Australian people. Sixty percent in the latest polls still oppose it. Well, because it's the right thing to uh, do for our country, Susan. Uh, we're a very emissions-intensive economy, and we have to be thinking about the future, not just from an environmental point of view, but from an economic point of view as well. And uh, we're certainly of the conviction that introducing a carbon price into the economy will uh, not only cut our greenhouse gas emissions and reduce the emissions intensity of the economy, but it will also drive a lot of investment that's needed in our manufacturing sector, our heavy industrials, uh, to improve their energy efficiency, to use cleaner energy sources, and it will drive a lot of investment in our electricity generating sector as well. Uh, we're already, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen significant investments in gas-fired electricity, for example. Now, Minister, speaking of economics, what about the timing of this carbon emission scheme? You know, we have major economic problems in Europe, and of course there's concerns about a slowdown in China as well, which buys up most of the uh, minerals and materials coming from Australia. Why do you want to put an extra tax on the country right now, right here? Well, because, as I said a moment ago, it's very important for the long-term uh, competitiveness of our economy, and uh, we regarded driving uh, investment into cleaner energy sources as very important for productivity and competitiveness in the future. We're certainly very mindful of the international circumstances and the uncertainty in European markets, uh, but you know, there's never an easy time for making uh, major reforms, and this has been debated in the Australian uh, you know, political community for many years now, and it's time we got on and made this reform. And what's more, it's, it's a very manageable economic reform for us to make, and it's an emissions trading scheme. Mm -hmm. There'll be a fixed price for the first three years. We'll move to a market price by mid-2015. Mid and I think, as you'll see from many of the publicly listed companies, uh, uh, they're quite able to respond to what's a modest economic uh, impact of introducing the carbon price. Now, Minister, I'm sure you're aware of the concerns uh, of Australians about the implementation of this carbon tax. They're concerned that these extra costs and power, gasoline, food, and even building materials might lead to job losses and also higher costs for the average Australian family. Well, let's keep it in context. There's no carbon price applied to you know the vehicles used by the average Australian families. There's no. Uh, carbon price applied to fuels uh, for light commercial vehicles and there's no immediate price on heavy on-road vehicles either uh, and in the economy more broadly it is a very manageable economic reform to make um, in areas of the economy that are emissions intensive and trade exposed uh, we're providing a lot of assistance in the form of free permits to companies operating in those areas uh, in industries like steel making and aluminium smelting in particular uh, cement manufacturing and a whole host of others, they'll receive about 95 per cent of the permits that they'll need under the carbon price arrangements under the emissions trading scheme, they'll receive those for free. And uh, so there's very important assistance uh, for the competitiveness of industries in the trade exposed part of the economy. Okay, so initially we have uh, the Australian government uh, charging 500 companies about $23 a ton uh, for their emissions starting July 2012 before switching to this so-called cap and trade scheme that you mentioned. Uh, Minister, is that still on track to start in three years? Is that what you want to do? Oh, yes, it's uh, fixed into the legislation. It'll go through our uh, Senate today and will become law from the 1st of July next year. So the first three years will be a fixed carbon price starting at $23 a tonne, but from 1 July 2015 we'll have a cap and trade emissions trading scheme with a floating price and obviously uh, linking our emissions trading scheme with uh, the European uh, scheme, for example, is very important. There's already an emissions trading scheme in New Zealand, our closest neighbour, and uh, we've got a working party with New Zealand to link our schemes there. But also in Asia where the clean development mechanism is very important, for example, in uh, producing certified emissions reduction units uh, out of China okay. in particular, uh, Australian mm -hmm. businesses will be looking to buy emissions reduction units in uh, Asian economies as well.
Uh, now, uh, Minister, how do you feel about the opposition leader, Tony Abbott, saying that if he gets elected into office, he will rescind your hard-fought uh, carbon trading scheme, basically, your carbon emissions tax? Well, it's not a credible uh, commitment that the opposition leader has given. It's, he's run an opportunist campaign uh, in our parliamentary democracy against this important reform. However, it's important, I think, for observers of Australian politics to bear in mind that both sides of politics have, in fact, supported carbon pricing as a response to the challenge of climate change uh, for many years. And, in fact, every living Liberal leader, including the current uh, one, Tony Abbott, has supported carbon pricing. Today I'll be appearing at an event with a former Liberal Party leader who supports carbon pricing. Uh, John Howard, who was the Australian Prime Minister for a long period of time, uh, supported carbon pricing and took a policy to the 2007 election, uh, which he ultimately lost. But he took a policy almost identical to that which Labor is prosecuting through our Parliament at the moment. So this is a reform that will stay and it will provide certainty for investors in our economy and especially that's very important in the energy sector in particular. Mr. Kobe, thank you so much for your time. We really, really appreciate it.